Hey, Brad Lancaster here, author of the books Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands Beyond, which you can get a deep discount direct from me at my website, harvestingrainwater.com. Okay, what I want to show you right now is uh, we got a really nice downpour here in uh, my neighborhood in Tucson, Arizona. Rains arrived late, but now they've arrived, and I want to show you how we're capturing some of that water. Okay, so water is behind me is going down the street into that water harvesting trap Kami chicane but i am going to change the point of view so you can get a better view i'm going to show you how i'm diverting water from one side of the street to the other okay so we've got the water flowing from i don't know if you guys can see it there's a student housing complex so the water from that roof and that parking lot is flowing down to the street and then along here so we get a lot of water uh, from that complex um, we first intercept it in this water harvesting trap of calming chicane. There's a big basin in there um, that narrows the street, slows traffic, and is growing vegetation that will grow to shade and cool that street. And all this wonderful vegetation and healthy soil life in there is helping bioremediate or naturally filter the toxins from the stormwater. This is all full now. Okay, and it is enabling us to freely irrigate with no supplemental irrigation a canyon hackberry a more uh, riparian higher water use plant with super tasty berries okay but now the water is overflowed comes along here and oh looky there i've put in a little temporary diversion directing water from this side of the street to that side of the street why because this side of the street gets 10 times as much storm water as that side of the street because this side of the street has a larger watershed including that student housing complex I just showed you. So, um, once the, uh, these, all this side of the streets, water harvesting basins have filled up, which they have, I'll show you in just a moment. I then direct water from this side of the street to this side of the street, because this side of the street has a much smaller watershed. Um, it's only from this traffic circle to there. So it takes a lot more rain to fill up those basins. So I like to uh, jump start the fillage with this simple diversion. And it's just uh, um, three pieces of wood, you know, four by, well, four by six, four by four, and a four by four. A little trick here, just so you guys know. Um, once you've put the wood down, um, you want to use uh, organic matter, like uh, leaf drop, um, weeds, and so on, instead of dirt on the upslope side. Uh, to ensure that you don't have a lot of water going under the, the wood. If you use dirt, um, that just kind of moves on. So use the trick that farmers have been using for millennia. Uh, use organic matter, way better than dirt for these temporary structures. And uh, you can see here that it is diverting water. You know, this is drier now. This is wetter. It's diverting water over the slight crown or hump in the street from that side of the street to this side of the street. And that has enabled us to fill up this whole um, water harvesting traffic calming chicane basin. Um, yeah, you're getting all this vegetation for free, native food bearing, medicinal bearing vegetation. It's a, it's a neighborhood orchard, it's a neighborhood pharmacy, it's a neighborhood craft store, all that. Okay, now that's overflowed. The water comes along here. It's filled this street side basin and then, um, since that's filled, it's overflowing and it's starting to fill this one. Uh, I don't know if you can see the water in there. Come around to this side. You can see, yep, yeah, it's starting to fill up. Um, and this whole thing can fill up to here. It'll back up on itself and then water will stop coming in once it's full. And the surplus will go down the street curb to the next basin. Um, this one's a shallower basin, so it's, it's near full already. Uh, then that's overflowed to here. And here we got a dip in the curb because there was once a driveway here. So we've got water coming on here. Um, but uh, this could take a lot more water yet. So I'm hoping the water back there that's overflowing out of those other basins will get to here and help this one fill up. Once it fills up, the way it'll overflow, because these are eddy or backwater basins, which I explain in my books on web and website, they're low maintenance, they're not flow through systems. Instead, once they fill up, the water backs up to the inlet point, 
and then it continues down the street to the next water harvesting structure and the next and the next and the next so we've lined the whole block so this street becomes the free irrigation source for the street side trees that are still yet young and growing so now i'm going to show you on this side of the street i'm going to come from the diversion um how all its basins are already full okay so we come back to the diversion and you can see just upstream of the diversion that street side basin is full this one's full the way this one gets its water is there's a curb cut right here or not i'm sorry not a curb cut a curb core it's a four inch diameter hole it goes through the curb at a diagonal with the flow and it's filled that whole basin up okay we don't have flooding issues because we make sure that the raised pathway is higher than the street curb so if water is going to back up anywhere it's going to come back to the street not flood the adjoining buildings okay all those little details and more in my books and website so flow has come along here here we didn't need a curb cut or curb core because they had the driveway and the dip in the curb so we just brought the basins to the dip and so that one's filled up that one's filled up and this one's got so much vegetation it's kind of hard to see but its inlet point is at that driveway um, dip in the curb water came in filled all that backed up on itself and then filled this basin that basin filled up and then overflowed to this basin um, and and this way you know we couldn't make this all basin you have to maintain a minimum five foot wide public pathway so people can enjoy this emerging native food forest freely irrigated with the rain um, here we've got another curb cut uh, this basin is filled it has overflowed and filled this whole basin so you know all the, not only the vegetation here along the path but the vegetation in the yard is getting all its free water because the roots of that vegetation grow underground to the basins and then here this is filled up and that basin's filled up you just keep going on down the block and all those basins are all filled waited for those to fill before I put in my diversion all right pretty sweet hope you guys are enjoying this hope I'm not speaking too fast and run around but ooh I get excited when it rains and we get all this free nutrient rich salt free rainwater and by harvesting this rainwater, we're able to use free on-site waters to irrigate all of this for free without extracting water from our groundwater table, the Colorado River, or any other surface water flows. So rather than extracting water from elsewhere and others, we are recharging water locally for us and everyone else in the watershed. And since we're high in the watershed of the Colorado, those down lower are benefiting too. All right, thanks for watching. And again, my name is Brad Lancaster. And please check out my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, because they'll give you all the details and the info on how to do this and so much more. Uh, and you can get my books available from me direct at deep discount at my website, harvestingrainwater.com. And if you want to check out uh, a lot of our efforts that are doing all this rain irrigated native food forestry in the neighborhood, check out the website neighborhoodforesters.org. Thanks so much for watching.